Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can bend type with bump maps using the displace filter in Photoshop. And if that isn't confusing to you, I promise it's all going to be revealed in just a minute. Now, this video was prompted by a question from a subscriber of mine from China who asked how they could create something like this effect. So here it is a video for you. So I'm using the type tool. I've got Myriad Pro and Bold selected, just a very plain font. I'm going to type the word distort and I'm going to do it in capitals. Now, this is very widely spread apart. I think I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. So I'm just going to adjust my settings here for the type and just bring the text in a little bit closer. I'm also going to enlarge it. So with the move tool selected, I'm just going to drag on the top corner of the type to distort it a little bit just because I want something fairly big so that we're going to be able to see it. Now, I'm going to save this file as a PSD file. Photoshop expects you to use a PSD file when you're using the distort filter. So whatever shape you want to distort to, and in this case, it's to the shape of this text, you're going to save a PSD file with that in it. So I'm just going to choose file and then save as, and I'm just going to call this distort. Of course, you can call it whatever you like, but it does need to be a PSD file. So I can make alterations to that. I'm just going to leave that file. I have an exact same size file already created. I'm using a document 920 by 1080 pixels in size, but yours can be any size. I just suggest that for ease of use when you're beginning to work with displacement maps that you make both documents the same size. It's just going to make life a little bit easier. Now we're going to put some diagonal stripes into this document and I already have a video that shows you how to do that. So let's just go briefly to that now. This is my video on making perfect diagonal stripe patterns quickly and easily in Photoshop. I'm going to link to it in the description below so that you can find it because I don't want to waste time making those patterns right now. But let's go and use one of those patterns. So once you've made your pattern, you will open a new document, choose layer, new fill layer and then pattern. You'll click OK and then you'll go and find your pattern. Now this is an uneven stripe pattern. The video for that as well, but we want the even stripe pattern. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to drop it down to about 50% so that it's a little bit closer up. I'll click OK. Control or Command 0 just to zoom the artboard to the size of the window. To use our bump map, we have to rasterize this pattern. I chose to create it as a pattern filled layer because you can always come back in, double click on the thumbnail here and make changes to it. But as soon as you know how big you want it to be and you've got it sort of all settled, then you'll need to rasterize it. I just made mine a little bit smaller. To rasterize it, right click and choose rasterize layer. Of course, you need to right click out here. You can't right click over here because rasterize layer isn't an option when you do that. So let's just go and find it and rasterize the layer. What that's doing is turning that into a bitmap layer. Now let's go and add our distort filter. So with the layer selected, filter, distort, displace. Now we get to choose how much displacement and the default I think in this dialog is 10 vertical, 10 horizontal, stretch to fit and repeat edge pixels. So let's go with that to begin with. I'll click OK and now we're prompted to go and select our displacement map, which was this one here, distort. I'll just click open and you can see that the type has been distorted somewhat by that displacement map. Everything has been offset. So we're getting the appearance of the word distort into our lines. Now, if that's not right, you can just press Control, Alt, Z, Command, Option, Z on a Mac. And you can go and change the settings. So filter, distort, displace. You can just adjust it horizontally and not vertically at all. So let's go 10 horizontal, zero vertical, click OK, go and get our distort. And you're going to get a slightly different effect there. I'm going to undo that again because you can also look at applying a blur filter to this type. So let's go to the layers palette here. Here's my distort. I'm just going to rasterize that type as well. I've got a type layer here that I shouldn't have. Let's go and add a blur to this. So I'll choose filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. 
I'm going to apply a very small blur filter to the edges of this type and click OK. And I'm going to save that as a separate file, File Save As. Now this is going to be Distort, but it's going to be with Blur. And I'll just click Save. So now let's go back to our Pattern Filled layer and let's try that different Bump Map filter. Distort, display. So I'm still going to go 10 horizontal, 0 vertical. And let's go and get our distort with blur. And this time we get a slightly different effect with the blur affecting the way that the distort filter is being applied. Now I'm just going to undo that. Let's try that again with the blur, but this time let's go 10 and 10. So you can experiment with different values for your blur, whether you do just horizontal or just vertical or a bit of horizontal and vertical, whether you use a blur on your type or not. And every one of those is going to give you a slightly different result. I hope that you've learned something in this video about creating bump maps and using them as a displacement for elements in Photoshop. Now, of course, you could use any pattern that you want to use. You can use a piece of text as your bump map, or you could use a texture. You could even use something like a stone texture, and that would bend as well. There's a lot for you to play around with with these effects. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted whenever I release new videos. And until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.